All right, Brian, let's talk about a fourth tug of war financial tension that exists. And again, we hear this one a lot too right now, especially in this unique environment that we're in. Hey, I, our current house is not perfect. So do I move? Do I go buy a new house or do I renovate and upgrade my current house? How do I decide which is the best decision? Well, I want to warn you about the mirage that is sitting out there. It's kind of a financial trap too is that a lot of people will have houses, even if it was just a normal house that was three or $400,000. Now that house in certain markets could be worth seven, $800,000 mm-hmm. because yep. we've had this huge run up. And you're like, wow, made all look this at money. all this money I have on my net worth statement right now. I'm, I'm rich in a lot of ways. Or maybe this is the time I should upgrade to that nicer house. This is why I say it's a trap, is that yes, you have on paper a lot of net worth that has been built up because of this huge inflation period that we just went through. But what are you going to do? What do you, if you move, first of all, you're going to walk away. We just had a stat that showed the lion's share of mortgages are below 4%. Mm -hmm. Your new mortgage is going to be 7%. That's right. Also, if you go to upgrade your house, you're going to be, yes, your house might be worth 700,000 now, but the upgrade house might be 900 to Mm -hmm. a million dollars in certain markets. This thing is dangerous, so we better walk you through so you don't fall into a trap on something that seems on paper to be such a win-win, and you're like, oh my gosh, there's a lot more going on here. Yeah, and this is one that there's not a definitive right answer for everyone. Personal finance is personal. So what you have to think through is how do I go about making this assessment? And frankly, this is probably going to be like a spreadsheet exercise. Sure. You're going to have to like put pen to paper and figure out what makes the most sense for you. But what we can walk through are the variables to consider. Brian, you already hit on the first one. Interest rates matter. They are important. If you have a two and a half percent interest rate right now on your mortgage and you go to buy a house, even if you pay at the exact same price for the exact same house, but now you have a 7% mortgage, it is substantially more expensive. So you have to factor that into the equation. Yeah, we even, we look at this case study. This one, this one blew my mind. We said, hey, let's take into account somebody who's just got a $2,000 a month payment. Mm-hmm. You know, when interest rates were 3% for the mortgages, you could afford close to a $407,000 house. Sounds great. But let's now look at the rest of it. Now, with interest rates being at 7%, that same $2,000 only affords a $276,000 house. Same monthly payment. Yeah. And there's, you know, like I said, we, the unfortunate thing, this is just looking at the interest rates. Sadly, we know that not only did interest rates go up, but housing purchase prices mm-hmm. went way up as well. So the purchasing power plus what your payments go for, how far they go, there we got we got hit both ways. Yeah, you just said it. The second variable is the cost of new home. I mean, frankly, can you afford it? If you bought a house for three hundred and now it's worth seven hundred, when you sell, if you have to go buy a nine hundred thousand dollar house, can you afford that? If you have to buy a million dollar house, is that inside the realm of affordability? Do you have enough cash to be able to keep it within twenty five percent of your gross income? Do you have the down payment? You have to figure out. Just because you can move, just because in theory you can sell your house just because it is a seller's market, does that mean that it's actually what's best for your financial situation? You have to factor in what you're moving to. Well, and this is why we we put another option in there. Mm-hmm. And I think this is where a lot of financial mutants are, are leaning in this direction. If you are with these higher interest rates, higher purchase prices, a lot of people are saying, looking at their house and they're looking at their current mortgage and just saying, I think I'll just renovate. Yep. But you look at the return on investment. And let me give you an experience here. The house behind me right now, they're finishing their basement. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I could go home right now, and I guarantee feet. you it's loud because they got a whole crew out there. I then think to the house to the right of me. They have completely redone their back landscape plan in their yard where they put a hardscape. They screened in their back porch. And then I, I, over on the hill here is another, and I'm like, holy cow. It's like every house in my neighborhood. Now, look, the houses are getting close to 10 years old, right. so it makes sense that people are investing. But I really can't help but think that people are looking at the return on investment mm-hmm. that they could get plus versus if they upgraded, they're landing on renovate versus move. And so you have to look at the cost of that, but there are also some other non quantitative metrics you have to think about. I mean, is your current house in a neighborhood that you love? Do you have a really 
a convenient commute for school or for work? Are you in the right school district? Does it satisfy the lifestyle needs that you have? Even though it's hard to put a dollar figure on those things, those things matter a ton. So you want to make sure when you're deciding, do I move to a new community? Do I move to a new house? Or do I just stay and renovate and upgrade and improve this house, you factor in all of the financial metrics as well as all the non-financial metrics. It's a it's a big life decision that's going to affect you and your family for years and years and years and years to come. And that's why I would encourage you. I would, we we have we we always say stay within our, our understanding of what the house buying mm-hmm. rules are. And this is something we we share this on every mm-hmm. one of our shows where we talk about the the down payment. We talk about the twenty five percent. But I think it can go beyond that. I would encourage you to go to moneyguy.com slash resources. Look at our house buying hub mm-hmm. because this is going to let you really put you your numbers in, go through our checklist, and turn the personal finance personal towards you so you know all the things you have to deal with. Here's the thing. We're living in a unique economy right now, and there are a lot of financial decisions that create tension in our life. Hopefully, we've given you the tools and the techniques and the things you need to know to be able to navigate those as well as you can. If you've not been to our website, go to moneyguide.com slash resources. Check out all the free resources there, as well as all the different hubs and calculators so that you can hopefully do money better.